Have you found something? What? A what? Worm. No. <laughs> Starting off the news this week, some worm news. A study published in the journal Nature Communications has analysed waxworm saliva and found that it contains chemicals that are capable of breaking down polyethylene, a durable plastic that takes many, many years to degrade without assistance. In fact, it was found that exposing polyethylene to waxworm saliva caused degradation akin to several years of usual exposure to the elements in just one hour. As polyethylene is the most widely used plastic in the world, this discovery could open up new avenues for tackling the enormous amount of pollution it creates. For this to be effective on a larger scale, the waxworm saliva would have to be produced synthetically, which would hopefully avoid a very large amount of carbon dioxide being produced as the worms break down the plastic. And now over to Ben, with what can only be described as more worm news. Thanks, Doug. Also in the latest worm news is a paper examining the functions and occurrences of extra embryonic tissues, that is, the tissues surrounding embryos in many animal groups as they develop, in tardigrades and velvet worms. These groups were chosen as they are the closest living relatives to the arthropods, the extra embryonic tissues of which have been studied a great deal and have been found to play a significant role in the development of these organisms. It turns out that these tissues also play a range of roles in the growth of velvet worms, including providing nutrition to the embryo and in shaping the overall body plan and the organs. Interestingly, the authors suggest that due to this very direct role in the development of the embryo, the commonly used term of extra embryonic might actually need to be reconsidered. So once again, the study of worms has led to some pretty important discoveries showing how amazing these animals are. There's also been some exciting prehistoric worm news recently with the naming and description of a 518 million year old armoured worm from China. Although this was published a few weeks ago, it's very interesting and definitely needs covering in a seven days of worm science. This creature is named Wufengella Bengtsoni and was found in the world-renowned early Cambrian deposit that yields the Chengjiang biota. It's a very cool looking worm, being preserved as an articulated fossil and showing an asymmetrical arrangement of armoured plates along its back, while flat lobes protruded from the sides of its body and clusters of bristle structures were situated between the armour and the lobes. Importantly, this worm was found to be a kind of animal called a tomotiid, a grouping that is ancestral to three key clades of invertebrates the bryozoans, brachiopods, and horseshoe worms. The subgroup of tomotiids that this ancient worm belongs to, though, was previously only known from very incomplete remains. And so Wu Fengella shows the complete appearance of these organisms, and reveals what these important invertebrate ancestors really looked like. In the less wormy news this week, there's also been the publication of a fascinating paper that investigates the pathways in which exceptional preservation of dinosaur skin can occur. It makes sense to assume that for a fossil to be exceptionally well preserved and show soft tissue, the animal would need to have been protected from scavenging by other organisms after death, so that the body stays in good condition. However, looking at an example of a so-called hadrosaur dinosaur mummy from North Dakota, this new paper shows how such protection might not always be needed. This Edmontosaurus specimen shows well-preserved 3D skin, but also, very interestingly, is clearly deflated and preserves injuries that were inflicted at or around the time of death by a carnivore. The researchers therefore suggest that incomplete scavenging of this carcass actually allowed the gases, fluids and microbes that would have resulted in fast decomposition of the body to escape, therefore enabling the more resistant soft tissues to survive the first few weeks after death as the body became desiccated and then later buried and eventually fossilised. So, the paleontologists suggest, this could actually explain why dinosaur skin preservation is not as extremely rare as might be expected if very specific, truly exceptional circumstances were always required for its preservation. Instead, other pathways to this sort of preservation were possible. Which is great news for the study of extinct animal soft tissues. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Just a reminder that we're doing Worm Week this year alongside the University of Warsaw Faculty of Biology, so please do check out their events, some in Polish and some in English, which we'll link in the description below.